Hey admins, welcome to this month's edition of What's New for G Suite Admins. Shoshana here, and I'm excited to share with you the feature updates from February 2019. Let's get started. And here's the headline news from February. We're changing how users give permissions to apps to access their information. End users now have more control over what data they choose to share with each app. These changes may impact how well the app functions, so we recommend you whitelist apps that you trust. Through whitelisting an app, you'll ensure the app has the permission it needs to work properly for your users. Different apps will implement updated app permission controls at various times over the next several months. Some apps will make this change immediately, but the most commonly used apps will implement them after April 2019. To minimize disruption, we recommend you whitelist trusted apps before April. Whitelisting apps is off by default, but apps can be enabled at the domain level. Let's start by reviewing your third-party app's access to API scopes by going to Security and then scrolling down to API Permissions. Here, you can examine API access for any of your core services. To whitelist a trusted app, click on Trusted Apps at the bottom and then select the Whitelist an App plus sign in the bottom right. In the Add App to Trusted List window, you can select Android, iOS, or web applications as the app type. For Android or iOS, type an app name and click Search to display a list of available apps. With web applications, you'll need to fill in the OAuth2 client ID. Check the box next to the app you want to add and click Add. To learn more, check out the Help Center. Here are our admin updates. You can now manage Android apps for your users when using basic mobile management. Previously, you could only do this if you used advanced mobile management. With basic mobile management, you can organize apps in the Manage Google Play Store, create web apps, and also private apps. You can securely manage work apps on Android devices through creating a whitelist of recommended apps to be available for users to install, automatically installing preferred work apps, and managing system apps that come pre-installed on company-owned devices. To learn more, check out the Help Center. Beginning April 16, 2019, mail retention rules and holds will stop protecting chat messages in classic Hangouts. Instead, Hangouts chat retention rules and holds will protect chat messages in both classic Hangouts and chat. You can continue to preserve messages in classic Hangouts before this April date through copying your holds from mail to Hangouts chat. We're adding a new feature in Vault where you can copy any existing mail hold to Hangouts chat by selecting the matter that contains the Gmail hold and clicking copy holds to Hangouts chat. To learn more, check out the Help Center. You now have more control over managing device access to your corporate data through limiting G Suite access for devices that use endpoint verification. With this ability, you can tag endpoint devices running Chrome as approved or blocked and configure the access level using the Access Context Manager and decide whether an additional review is needed for newly registered endpoint verification devices. This will bring similar functionality to what's currently available for mobile device management to desktop devices using Chrome OS or Chrome browser. To set a policy for whether newly registered endpoint verification devices need admin approval, go to the Admin Console, Device Management, Setup, Device Approvals, Device Approvals. Here, you can choose to check or uncheck the box to set a policy. This will default to unchecked, so you won't have to manually approve newly registered devices. Note that device access to corporate data can be configured at any time by using the Access Context Manager. To learn more about controlling access for devices with endpoint verification installed, see our Help Center. You can now input addresses instead of latitude and longitude coordinates to enter the location of your office buildings in the admin console. This is a more efficient and reliable way for you as a G Suite admin to manage international office locations. Adding address information immediately unlocks automatic correction of room and resource time zones 
based on building address. We'll now automatically set the correct time zones for all resources in these buildings and help ensure you see accurate usage by time of day in the Room Insights dashboard. Address information can be inputted either directly from the admin console, bulk upload via CSV file, or upload via the Building Resources API. For more information, see the Help Center. In the admin console, under Manage Resources, Manage Buildings, you can enter addresses directly and be shown a Google map to confirm their location. This is recommended for entering a small number of buildings at a time. You can also bulk upload via CSV file in the admin console, also found under Manage Buildings, to bulk upload spreadsheets that support a general address format so you can verify your locations in many countries and regions. For more information, see the Help Center. We're adding auto-provisioning support for three new apps this month, Boomi, Keeper, and Space IQ. When auto-provisioning is enabled for a supported third-party app, any users created, modified, or deleted in G Suite are then automatically added, edited, or deleted in the third-party app as well. For more information on how to set up auto-provisioning, check out the Help Center. Well, that's it for February's updates. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, save the playlists, and also check out our G Suite release calendar and What's New newsletter to stay informed. This has been Shoshana with the What's New for G Suite Admins, February 2019 edition. Thanks for watching.